Today's episode of Fantasy Fiction is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download at audibletrial.com slash fantasyfiction. Over 100,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Kindle, MP3 player, or Magic Stone. Today we're recommending A Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. Impress your friends with real-life magic. Act like you read a long book without any actual reading. Think of all the masturbating you'll get done. So if you're enjoying the show, give the free trial a chance. That's audibletrial.com slash fantasyfiction. Enjoy the episode. Reese's, put down that Merc Monk. But he's my friend. In the land of fantasy and the fields of fiction, they roll two knights across the plain. To thieves of the night, to warriors of honor, in the shadow of the mountain cry their name. Until the deed is done Until the quest is won The battle's in our minds Until the end of time Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Fantasy Fiction. My name is Dominic. My name is Josh and Nick. And it's not. That's it's not fucking it. not. Did you, you said that last episode, didn't you? I don't know. I, I used material twice, three times. Four times a lady. <laughs> Thrice times, spy times. I'll do whatever. I'll burn this whole thing down. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you, he has matches in his hand, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. And a gun. And a lighter. And a knife. And a lighter. And one of those long lighters that you use to light candles. Oh, like the uh, the grill lighters where you reach mm. in. Dude, you know what's fun to play with? All right, don't do this. But you know what's really fun to play with? What's that? Those really long matches. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those, those are, are cool. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> You want to you want to you want to light those and then run at each other? Yeah. With them? <laughs> Dude. Yes. Now that's a good time. Now that's a good suburban time. That's it's a board on a Friday <laughs> drunk time. <laughs> drunk and burned. <laughs> Josh? Yes. We have a little bit of a celebration here. I heard about this. We have reached 1 year of fantasy fiction. Uh, that's unbelievable to Being me. Being in existence. I don't think I've ever done anything for a year. I don't think I have either. No, I have. I've done lots of things. <laughs> I've been alive for at least three. At least three of them. I mean, really a lot. Been sleeping the yeah. rest. Yeah. I remember, I mean, it's not that long ago, but I remember when we first started it, it was it was a magical day, mm-hmm. and we decided we were going to be idiots yep. on a podcast. And it didn't matter. We were going to be idiots, and that's okay. Mm. What are you going to do about it? Uh, fight me? You could if you really wanted to. Run at me with some matches? Nah. Run at me naked with a boner? <laughs> like, jousting? <laughs> Man jousting. <laughs> that should be in one of my stories, probably. <laughs> you just, yeah. But I just blew it. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy that yeah. you've been doing this for a year. It kind of feels a lot longer. It does feel a lot longer, because, uh, writing 43... Yeah. stories is hard to do it's, it is it is very challenging but that's kind of the beauty of the show right. because we've been getting i think we're a lot funnier than we were when we started the show yeah Not to say that we weren't funny when we started but like no we were pieces of shit it really challenged us so you, we write these things by ourselves right. so like we're constant we're obviously we're writing them for each other to make each other right. laugh but we're also in turn trying to make ourselves laugh and with each episode we're trying to kind of not necessarily one up, but we're right. always coming up with new bits. That's why things go in and out of fashion, I guess. Right. Like the like sometimes there'll be a lots of songs, mm-hmm. and then sometimes like I haven't. I was thinking about that on the car ride here. Actually, I was like, I haven't put a song in my story. In yeah, a while. I, I realized when I was writing this one, I was like, ah, oh, this one doesn't have a song. I well, I mean, you song. ended with the the Ching Chang Chonger song, <laughs> and I don't know if you could ever. Oh, hey, hey, again, I I don't remember writing that. I, I mean, remember a bug singing that. There was a story with that in it, and author surrogate said that. I was reading a scroll. I was reading a scroll. That that eagle, an eagle dropped down. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is neat. But it's all been really great, yeah. and we've only continued to do it because of the audience that we have. Yeah. You know, we have that. Uh, it's kind of a beautiful thing and a beautiful way to get better at something is having an audience kind of with you the whole time and having fun with you. Really, it's the only way, I think. Um, not to get too serious or whatever, but like when when you play music... The only way to get better is to do it in front of people. That's true. You know, when you're a comedian, the only way to do it is to stand up there and 
get booed at. <laughs> yeah, well, I've you done know. that. <laughs> <laughs> I I made people laugh too. Yeah. Okay. But you learn sometimes. No, I I don't think I ever got booed at. No, I don't think you got booed at. Except when one time I forgot all my lines and I just started trying to break dance. Okay. That was the best. This will be the funny thing. No, I never did that. <laughs> but... Now I will. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I think I maybe you've gotten a groan or two. A groan? I've gotten groan. Is that yeah. worse than boo? I would no, think. boo is worse. Boo's worse. Groan is like, oh, you made a bad joke. But Which, Whatever. But with the beauty of the internet, nowadays people can kind of stand up in front of the yeah. internet. And that's why this is all a beautiful thing. Because the internet is beautiful. But it it's is. also scary. It's scary and beautiful, kind of like a vagina. <laughs> Josh? I mean, have you looked at one? <laughs> like today? <laughs> no. I have. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, what we wanted to say... We are getting way off track. What we wanted to say is that we we thank you guys yet again for uh, sticking with us and listening to the show, especially with all of our hiatuses and such. Yeah, is hiatuses a word? I guess hi and I hi and I Haiti Haiti. It's Haiti. That's it. <laughs> with all our Hades, with all our Hades. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, regardless of all of that, we have <laughs> stories today, and we have prompts, and we forgot to mention them on the last episode. And those prompts are gauntlet suggested by Brandon. Ryan and battle axes suggested by alex mcleat leech mcleek mcleek uh, i'm not i'm sorry i'm terrible i don't know how to read i'm just gonna act like i didn't do anything bad <laughs> do, 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 do. that's how you do it break dancing time. <laughs> oh let's break dance now <gasps> oh uh yeah. <laughs> you know we picked the, we picked those prompts last week and then i realized while i was writing i was like Fuck, we did an episode. Yeah. You texted me and you were like, we didn't say the thing. And I was like, la 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 la. (laughs) But we did an episode on gauntlets already. We did? Yeah. I don't remember that. Yeah. Well, my story in the previous gauntlet episode was a cliffhanger. I've yet to resolve it. So oh my God. I still got to do that. I've got to get around to it. I know. That's the thing. We've written so much stuff. You got to like make a mind map. Yeah. To like keep it all together. We should get together and just map everything maybe we should just get together and really live in this place or just hug yeah hard yeah for two hours run at each other naked with boners and hug (laughs) whoever comes first is the loser winner (laughs) whichever way you look at it (laughs) But, but before we get into that yeah josh what did you do this week uh, I was at Luke, our friend Luke Brown's house. He was on vacation, so I house sat and cat mm-hmm. sat. And, and uh, uh, drank? I drank a little bit. You drank sat? I drank uh, a fair amount. A few a few days, I was a little groggy. I learned recently that I, I don't <laughs> drink much anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like a, you know, it's almost like it's a drug. And if you don't do it enough, you go back to try and doing the same amount, and you die. Yeah, you could die. <laughs> yeah. It's poison. You're drinking poison. Yeah. So, uh, but I didn't do much. I, I I watch television, which I never do. Like I never watch TV. Mm-hmm. Um, so I got to do that. I binged on on Sports Center, and I sold all of Luke's toys for thirty dollars. Uh, oh, nice, man. Hey, that's a good buy yeah. and a good deal. Did you give any of it to Luke? Uh, no. Good. I wouldn't. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, uh, <laughs> did you watch that uh, thing I suggested to you? No, I didn't. No. Oh, man. No, wait, the pirate thing? Yeah. I did. I watched like half of it, and then I like it was at night, so I fell asleep. Uh-huh. It was really crazy. Uh, what, the movie I'm talking yes. about is Captain Harlock, Space Pirate. Yeah. It's a 2013 film based off an old uh, sci-fi anime series, and it's on Netflix, and what did you think of the first half, at least? It was good. Um. You know, it's very anime, and I, I, I like that. Um, it looked great. Mm-hmm. I like the concept of it, because it's so crazy. Yeah. Just fucking space Isn't pirates. Isn't that intro awesome? Yeah, and the, the suits were really cool. I mm-hmm. love the, the suits that they wore. It's pretty complicated. Yeah. I mean, it's a pirate story, so there's a lot of, like, kind of, like, you know. Betrayal. Mm-hmm. But I think it's a great both pirate and sci-fi story. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Uh, but if you guys want to check it out, it's on Netflix. It's called Captain Harlock. The beginning scene is really cool. Yeah, the, the, I, I thought the lore and the story yeah. and the setting the stage for the world was really yeah. bad. I went to yard sales yesterday. That's much better. 
That's much more fun. Is I, it? I was in the hum- the the humidity of the year in Philadelphia. It was eight hundred percent humidity yesterday. Yeah, if you walked outside, back sweat as soon as you. Yeah, I drove in a car for f- like fifteen minutes. Oh god! And I got out and I was like, oh, I. Uh, Need to drink a gallon of water because all my sweat's in my seat. <laughs> yep, yep, it's all gone now. It's disgusting. I picked up uh, some Lord of the Rings goblets. Yeah, from uh, Burger <laughs> King. I got a bunch of little stuff. I got a Super Nintendo. Dude, that's the thing that Los Angeles didn't have. Like just yard sales yard where you could buy. In. Well, they had like randomly people are just selling their stuff on the sidewalk. I would I would picture a Los Angeles yard sale as just people selling hotel paintings. <laughs> pretty close <laughs> like just but they they made them oh no oh no they don't they don't do that there no there is some people who do original art but yeah in the world just that's a general statement <laughs> uh but most people are just selling like their random clothes and like yeah. weird stuff there's never really the stuff i'm looking for on uh at that at yard sales out there yeah so. no games and and fun cool toys no i used to go to collect because i have a really like, uh, pretty big star wars toy collection mm-hmm. and i used to go because you'd always find that one mom who was getting rid of her kids atst you could yeah. snake that thing for Ooh, like yeah. two bucks you know yeah well i did that yesterday some mom was getting rid of her super nintendo and yeah. atari and, that's uh, cool i swooped that shit up that's cool but anyway this isn't the yard sale podcast god damn it it's the maybe fantasy it podcast josh maybe it will be maybe it will be soon <laughs> but with that Let's get into some fantasy. Fantasy, baby. Baby. I'm gonna lick your lips with my fantasy kiss. <laughs> I'm into it. Let's do this. <laughs> All right, Dom. Are you ready? Yes. For I, my story. Yes. My story doesn't have a title, so this is going to be the first of the anthology uh, Boner Jizz. Boner Jizz. Boner Jizz anthology. Boner Jizz. So, any untitled work. When when Peter Jackson <laughs> goes to make the movie of of all these stories, mm-hmm. he's going to look at like the Similarian mm-hmm. Boner Jizz, as you guys say. That's, uh, bo- that's going to be Boner Jizz, the, the real thick book. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. Boner Jizz oh, it is. a real thick book. <laughs> oh. Gross. Been waiting for this one. <laughs> Fucking Daranos. You gotta be shitting me. This shithole again? <laughs> I thought for sure I was going to get promoted to Orkspire this week. I specifically told my agent, <laughs> Sheila McNutley, that I was tired of doing stories in Daranos. <laughs> Did you know that one time that Reese's wizard, what's his name, <laughs> put a never ending dick fart spell on me? <laughs> yeah, and I had a date that night. <laughs> yeah, hello, Sheila. This is Dave. Dave, the narrator. Yeah, I want to talk about my renegotiating my contract. They're offering what? 10% on the back end? For use of the company Bone Speedboat? Tickets to Orc Miz? It's a deal. Beautiful Darren. Home of the most majestic adventurers ever created week after week. What's not to love? <laughs> Uh, hey, by the way, what was, the, what was the agent's name? Sheila McNutt? Sheila McNutley. <laughs> McNutley. <laughs> I like People it. People are named that. <laughs> sure, why not? I think. People are named all kinds of stupid shit. Yeah. Deep in the shit-smelling bowels of some godforsaken earth pussy in some fuck-forgotten <laughs> area of the most spooktastic section of Theranos, Fred the Skull Peeler yeah! daintily and stealthily made his way into a darkened labyrinth chamber, making sure to avoid any and all booby traps, except for the ones that actually made sweet dope hangers pop out. <laughs> yeah, that's why they're called booby traps. Wait, wait, so you're like walking along and then you step on a tile and then just yeah. some boobs? Just fucking fat titties fall down. But hopefully they just knock you out. Right, it, well, I mean, or hopefully you just get a peek. Just... That's the that's the. But game. That, why is that a trap? The the trap is that you don't know. Oh. And that you want to know which ones. <laughs> oh, it smells like a dog barfed out a shit stromboli in here. Fred said as he entered a darkened room. As he entered, torches on the wall lit themselves with some kind of crazy fire magic and illuminated the entire room. 
Sitting there in the room were the gauntlets of Musseldom, the only gauntlets which, when worn, would allow the wearer to lift up the sacred battle axe of Yo Mama jokes, <laughs> a.k.a. the Gasher. <laughs> oh, man. At last, Fred said as he approached the gauntlets, now I can grab the sacred battle axe of Yo Mama jokes and burn the <laughs> shit piss out of every sucker with two balls and a dick. <laughs> But as he reached his left hand inside of the left gauntlet, he heard a familiar voice. Fred, you piece of smelly dick meat, said Sid the Rogue. (laughs) Yeah! As he reached his right hand into the right gauntlet simultaneously. Lay off, troll. This treasure is mine. Go home to your totally hot wizard wife, who I'd totally bang if you were dead, Fred replied. Whoa! That's pretty rough. (laughs) <laughs> Fred, Fred don't give a fuck He's pissed I told you I was coming here today to try to get these relics But you just had to show up and try to snake them from me It's what I do baby It's what I do <laughs> Sid replied while taking a drag from a giant spliff As he blew the smoke out from his nostrils It spelled out the words Still got it pussy <laughs> Nice. (laughs) Suddenly, magic started flying everywhere, and the room began to shake. Behind them, a secret wall opened up, revealing the battle axe, and also a ghost wizard. Oh, God, yes. (laughs) Yes, good, said the ghost (laughs) wizard, whose ghostly dong could be seen through his pants, because they, too, were also a ghost. (laughs) <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> it's canon. <laughs> <laughs> now the two of you must be stuck together for eternity, he said as he began humping the air. Cursed, he said as he humped. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was looking at your ghost hog. Did you say we're stuck together, you fucking piece of whimsy cum vapor? <laughs> Asked Sid as he again went back to looking at the ghost wizard's weird pork unit. <laughs> I don't even remember writing that. Pork <laughs> unit? <Yeah. laughs> oh, man. As he finished, an unbreakable magic ghost chain connected the two gauntlets. Just let go of the gauntlet, Fred demanded. Fuck that noise, Fred the Duh Peeler. <laughs> nice one, retorted Sid. I'm not going to let you have them both just because you got here first, disarmed all the booby traps, fought off the Skeleman, changed the oil in my bone car, took my grandma to wizard bingo, gave me a very lovely wedding gift, and killed that double ghost that was haunting my favorite muscle shirt. <laughs> <laughs> From the back of the room, the wizard ghost laughed. The fuck are you still doing here? shouted Fred. Get out of here! Curse! Goodbye! <laughs> Said the wizard as he yoded disappeared away. <laughs> Suddenly, all kinds of crazy secret doors started to open, unleashing a horde of angry skeleton shouting all kinds of crazy obscenities as they waved their cursed swords in the air. Pick up the axe, yelled Fred, as Sid picked up the axe and began to swing it wildly with the gauntleted hand. As he did, a disembodied voice from the axe boomed, Yo mama is so uncomely. When orcs have sex with her, they put condoms on their eyes. <laughs> oh, oh, damn. <laughs> Several of the skeleton laughed and one yelled, Get wrecked, pussy, from the back of the room. <laughs> <laughs> Sid slayed a hapless skeleton who collapsed onto the ground. As he laid there, he said, Tell my wife, this is better than a divorce. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh no, no, that's sad. That's sad. <laughs> Sid switched hand to his non-gauntleted hand, and immediately the axe slammed to the floor. Sid tried lifting it, but to no avail. You have to use the gauntlet, you idiot, Fred yelled as three skeleton punched him right where he makes pee-pee. <laughs> <laughs> Is that in the balls? Yeah, that's is that where pee pee is made? <laughs> uh, yeah, duh. I went to health class. <laughs> uh, go on. <laughs> Sid lifted the axe with his gloved hand. As he did, the axe began to speak in its ancient wisdom again. Yo, mama is so girthy <laughs> that when she's on the all sea ball, it becomes an oh god, I've seen too much ball. <laughs> Double damn. <laughs> damn! All the skeletons said they stopped fighting for a moment, but then quickly began to fight again. Sid split a few in half until he was overwhelmed. Hey, fart lips, a little help? Sid yelled over to Fred, who had his own hands full with Skeleton. 
Throw me the axe, Fred yelled. Sid threw the axe to Fred, who grabbed it with his gauntleted hand. As he did, he spun Fred, who was still attached to him, away from the Skeleton to his side. Again, the axe began to speak the wisdom of the 69 winds. (laughs) Yo mama is so hairy that once her and a Sasquatch were a before and after model for a Brazilian wax commercial. (laughs) And she was the before. Damn. <laughs> Said the axe as it held up that one picture of Bigfoot walking away from the camera. <laughs> After. <laughs> it just holds it up. The axe does this. <laughs> With what? Ha- oh, magic. With magic. magic. With magic. It's canon. It's, it's canon. canon. <laughs> Again, all the Skelemans stopped short. Oh, fuck, they said. <laughs> One of them caught on fire from his jaw dropping so hard, and his eyes started on fire. Then he fell to the ground and turned into dust. <laughs> <laughs> he was cheating on the skeleton from before who wanted to divorce his wife. Karma, bitches. <laughs> Fred and Sid again pressed their attack, but were overwhelmed by what were now overhyped as shit Skeleman. <laughs> One Skeleman spun kicked Sid in the face, and some were even breakdance fighting and cutting denim jackets into denim vests, so you know these dudes were right. <laughs> they were doing that amidst all the fighting. <laughs> it's just crazy. They were like, we gotta do this. We look cool. Yeah, it'll, we'll fight better. Yeah, we'll, we'll fight we'll, harder. That's true. It's true. We have to use the axe together to get out of this, dude, Fred said. Sid grabbed the handle as the two of them started to swing wildly. Again, the axe began to speak in its ancient tongue. Yo mama is so uncomely that not even I would fuck her with Flyman's dick. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man, that's bad. (laughs) At the sound of this, every skeleton in the room dropped the fuck down and got their eagle on as the hype train bypassed Combsville and went straight to Pound Town. (laughs) (laughs) That was the express. (laughs) Makes sense. (laughs) <laughs> Every skeleton in the room got hype as shit And one even threw a chair While another one dropped a microphone <laughs> Dude, that is fucked up, man Fred said I didn't say it, man, the axe It's possessed as shit, Sid replied Nah, man, that's fucked up I can't believe you'd sink so low As to say that, that kind of hateful potty mouth yuckiness <laughs> Fred retorted <laughs> Trying to hold back from the man tears <laughs> Dude, seriously right now? <laughs> said Sid. Suddenly, the, the wizard reversed Yoded back into the room. Wizard MacGuffin! He said as he cast a teleportation spell. <laughs> Fred and Sid were now outside, but in a large coliseum. Their hands still linked together and both still holding the axe. In the distance, they could hear a loud roar. Man, I'm not going to forget you said that, Fred said. Yeah, well, I'm not going to forget you're an idiot, said <laughs> Suddenly, from both sides of the Coliseum, the two heroes could see the source of the the loud roar. The crowd of the Coliseum erupted as two bone monster trucks were getting ready to seemingly (laughs) smash into one another in a deadly (laughs) game of chicken. What? What? This is where they were teleported? Damn. Let the monster truck joust begin! (laughs) The ghost wizard yelled because now he was somehow the announcer. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the two bone trucks raced toward each other as Fred and Sid stood helplessly in the middle. We have to work together, Sid said. <laughs> and though I would normally not need help doing anything because I'm so queefing awesome, it's the only way out of this. Fred stood there stubbornly <laughs> as the drivers of the monster trucks leaned out their driver's side windows and held their lances firm. Fred, you butthurt turd wafter. <laughs> They're going to crush us, said Sid, pointing at Bone Grave Digger. <laughs> Turd wafter. Nailed it. He muttered to himself. (laughs) Fred stood fast with his arms crossed, facing away from Sid. Dude, you're killing me. Literally, you're going to get me killed, (laughs) Sid said annoyed. Just as the two bone behemoths were about to crush them, Fred grabbed Sid and leapt in the air, straight up like Michael (laughs) Jorkton. Well done. Well done, Josh. The two bone trucks clashed lances as Bone Gravedigger exploded into all kinds of cool parts and bones, and probably a magic engine flew out. I don't know how bone cars work. Do I look like your goddamn mechanic? (laughs) Fred reached the apex of his jump just as the coolest part of the explosion was happening, like in Die Hard 2, and it was totally awesome. The flames dissipated as Fred and Sid landed with a thud. 
You you saved us, buddy, Sid said, half surprised. Yeah, well, your wife would have killed me, Fred said, trying to act like he didn't really love his friend, whom he loved. Aww. <laughs> Just as they were maybe about to kiss, <laughs> the victorious bone monster truck pulled up and revved its terrifying magic engine. Now they do have magic engines. <laughs> <laughs> Not like it matters because we're so taint-fucked, Fred said as the headlights of the bone truck shone on their face and symbolically cast a shadow that spelled out the words, you're taint-fucked. <laughs> oh, hey, cool, a friendly voice suddenly said. You guys found my, my, my Jaston gloves. <laughs> Fred and Sid shielded their eyes from the light to get a better look at where the voice was coming from. Soon they saw a nine-foot-tall Bigfoot wearing a cool leather jacket and wraparound shades. The, the, these gauntlets, Fred asked? Yeah, y'all. I'm sorry. How rude of me. Hi there. My name is Joel. <laughs> Joel the Bigfoot. You found my lucky jousting gloves, said the Bigfoot as he reached out and undid the curse, binding the two adventurers together and pulled the gauntlets off their hands. As he did, the axe fell to the ground. Is is that your axe too? Sid asked. Nah, that's that mean old wizard. But if you want me to get rid of it, I will. <laughs> that axe looks mighty evil. <laughs> yeah, it almost cost us our friendship, said Fred. As the Bigfoot picked up the axe, it began to, again to speak its venomous bile. Yo mama lacks so much intellect that once she placed lipstick on her forehead just to make up her mind. <laughs> <laughs> Silly axe, said the Bigfoot, cheerily. My mama died when I was three. <laughs> and then he got in his bone monster truck and drove off into the sunset. Finn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a great story. <laughs> and like Bigfoot... It. Made an appearance. Now, I have to ask. He was driving Bigfoot. Was, okay, yeah, that was my question. <laughs> <laughs> the monster truck. Yes. I remember when I was a kid, I had a photo of me standing next to Bigfoot. I remember when I was a kid, I had a Bigfoot radio. It Whoa. was It was a monster truck. I probably still have it somewhere, but it was a, you know, like a radio. Mm -hmm. It didn't work very well. Mm. But, but it probably got smashed. It probably did. I probably smashed it. Because it was it's Bigfoot's radio. Because I couldn't listen to 97.5 PST. <laughs> you know, uh, I like how Gravedigger really did one-up Bigfoot. Bigfoot was the big draw. Yeah. And then Gravedigger became the big one. Well, in my head, Gravedigger was always the bad guy. Yeah. And Bigfoot was the good guy. Because wrestling. Sure. You know, there was always a bad guy and a good guy. But then you look at monster truck rallies and you're like, how does this work? Yeah, do they? Win? I mean, is it even? How do they win? I think there's maybe it's time. I don't know. We should maybe we should have looked it up. Someone will comment into. All us. I know is barefoot stinks. <laughs> barefoot. Do you remember barefoot? Oh no, was that like a bigfoot rip? -off? It was like shitty bigfoot, oh. and he was red. Fuck barefoot. And red stupider than blue. <laughs> yeah, it's real stupider. Did I always pick blue? I had Pokemon blue. Oh yeah, I had blue also. We're cool. This is why we're friends. This is our show. Ready for my tale of gauntlet and battle axes? I'm ready. This one is called Dog Dang After Dude. <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie. Yeah. Maybe it's kind of like it. Maybe it's based Maybe. on it. Hmm. All right. Hmm. A storm gathered over an abandoned castle long forgotten in Orkspire. Lightning struck a nearby farm. The farm exploded. <laughs> it rained breakfast for hours. <laughs> breakfast? Like eggs and stuff? Yeah. Oh. There's a pig on the farm. It's rained some bacon. <laughs> it rained some eggs and bacon. Maybe some cheese. Maybe there's a cow in there. I love this farm. That doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> 
A lone sorcerer stood at the highest tower in the castle with his hands held to the sky. Adventuring losers and all around shit eaters of Orkspire, <laughs> listen to my voice as it shouts unpleasantly! Oh my God. Beckoned the sorcerer as he opened his robe a little bit to reveal some commanding chest hair. Ooh. I've spent years turning this quaint little hillside castle into my most badass gauntlet, <laughs> and none of y'all has what it takes to defeat it! <laughs> Time and time again, your champions have tried, but something sharp or magical usually puts an end to that. Sometimes both. Like that one guy who was just walking by my castle, and a haunted sword cut off his goddamn arms. <laughs> oh my god. And since none have conquered my trials, I've only added more obstacles out of pure boredom. <laughs> Today's new addition... Guillotine blades that swing on pendulums and a magic rat who can talk and in will inflict <laughs> self-doubt while you try to dodge the pendulums and also scary music. <laughs> Dude, the worst part is the rats. <laughs> Nobody needs to be having any more self-doubt. Yeah, come on. I don't need... I'm just trying to do this That's thing. That's shitty. <laughs> Uh, continued the sorcerer as he laughed sinisterly. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go watch a kangaroo box a small child on my Aussie ball. <laughs> Damn, he's evil. <laughs> he's, he's, he's bad. <laughs> and with that, the sorcerer returned to his chamber. Mm. A brave dog in the nearby town of Bread could hear all of this because dogs can hear better than people can. <laughs> and did you know that they also can see infrared like the predator? <laughs> In Oxfire, they can. <laughs> Holy shit. Every day, the dog had to listen to the sorcerer taunt the surrounding towels, and he was damn sick of it. <laughs> I'm fucking sick of this dude's shit, thought the dog who was damn sick of this fucking shit. <laughs> Every day, this a-hole starts yelling about his stupid castle gauntlet hybrid, and I'm dog dang fed up with it. <laughs> hybrid. <laughs> Is that like the real estate listing? Yeah. It's a hybrid. It's a hybrid. Uh, two and a half. Uh, it's a gauntlet castle duplex. It's a location, location, <laughs> location. The dog had no name for he had no owner. He was a white bull terrier because those dogs look like they have muscles. <laughs> and he had a satchel filled with potions and other helpful goods. This dog rules. He's a little inveteran dog. Yeah. The dog knew he couldn't conquer the gauntlet alone. Look, thought the dog to himself, but also kind of to the audience. <laughs> I can't do this by myself because one of the biggest challenges for a dog is a closed door. And I don't have any hands. And if a door doesn't have a doorknob and is not a door handle, I'm kind of fucked. Yeah. <laughs> Therefore, the dog decided to team up with a champion to defeat the annoying sorcerer. Dog's smart. Yeah, well, you know, you got, you got a goal. Now, how are you going to get there? What's yeah. the realistic way of you getting He's there? got the potions. He got the potions. Got doesn't the have hands. Doesn't have hands. Got to get a team up. Yeah. First, there was Kronthar, the mighty half-orc, half-barbarian, 100% half-orc, half-barbarian. <laughs> <laughs> like most barbarians, his hair was long and black, and his muscles were muscular. Mm -hmm. And he had a tattoo of his clan's insignia, which was usually a sword or a skull or some dice. Some dice. Or a buff animal, or a dagger going through a heart, or some bleeding cards, or a knife getting a tattoo, or a bear eating the world, or one of the moons <laughs> with a face on, on it of a dad, but not someone's dad, just like a police sketch artist's idea of a good dad. He's got a nice smile, but you know he's thinking about the big game. <laughs> <laughs> anyway... <laughs> What made Kronthar different was that he had elven ears as the result of a curse put on him by a jungle serpent. Kronthar had agreed to split half of an old rich goblin's gold if the serpent could come up with a way to get both of their names on the goblin will. Well, the serpent came up with a plan that had three very humorous montages, but in the end it worked. <laughs> but when the old goblin croaked, Kronthar revealed that he had tricked the old goblin into thinking he was a sexy woman and married him under the pseudonym Regina, collecting <laughs> all of the gold. <laughs> the jungle serpent then cursed the half-orc, half-barbarian with elf ears forever. Moments after being cursed, Kronthar realized that he did not need to include the jungle serpent at all if his plan was to trick the old goblin <laughs> into marriage. Kronthar would often think about this right before he fell asleep and stay awake for another three hours. Oh my god. That was the real curse. <laughs> <laughs> I think you and I suffer from this curse. <laughs> I know I do. Yeah, I know. I should have never talked to that jungle serpent. <laughs> 
Anyway, Kronthar entered the gauntlet and stood his ground against the sorcerous horde of goblins, wielding oversized chip weapons, rusted farm tools, and Kronthar was pretty sure one of them was just carrying a sick cat in a cat carrier. Oh, that's he, terrible. <laughs> he was, it was just hissing at people. <laughs> He cut them down one by one until the attack stopped, when suddenly a black arrow flew from a nearby tower right at Kronthar's head, when double suddenly the dog leaped through the air and caught the arrow in his mouth, spun around three times and launched the arrow back at the goblin archer, piercing his skull so hard that the arrow's momentum sent him flying out of a window and into an adjacent swamp where he drowned. That's how we do That's terrible. It's a pretty bad. That's video. worse than getting shot in the head. I mean, I don't know. I've never been dead. I imagine mm-hmm. you just die both ways. I heard. Well, I guess he drowned. I heard drowned. That is worse. <laughs> <laughs> Mighty dog, shouted Kronthar. Mm-hmm. You saved my life. Join me on this quest to kill the sorcerer. The dog barked in agreement, but as soon as Kronthar turned to continue into the castle, he was punched in the back of the head by a magic tree and he died. <laughs> He just got cold. What? Cold. Yeah, he just got punched. He's dead. My God! Then there was Gorchar the Orc Warlock. <laughs> he seemed to be a promising adventurer because he had an eye patch, and it was mm-hmm. well known that he worked out naked to the Mortal Kombat theme. Dude, <laughs> that's that's how you know you're getting. That's off. awesome. <laughs> Gorchar wore a flowing black silk robe with iron shoulder guards with spikes on them that had skulls skewered through them with die trying written on them in blood. <laughs> Man, did Jesus you follow that? Christ. Did you follow that? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, Gorchar was fucking cool. <laughs> Gorchar tore through the castle's first few obstacles, devouring many goblins in flames. He then grabbed onto a vine and swung across an alligator pit. That's an owl and alligator hybrid. Don't ask me how that looks. <laughs> Dude, you come up with the best animals. It's just a matter of kind of changing. Uh, being a genius. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. You know what? Yeah. It is about being I know. a genius. I was gonna, well, we finish each other's senses, and that's you're what right. you're going to You're absolutely right. <laughs> Gorchar started to walk away all cool after that, but then an alligator fucking jumped out of the oh pit and started flying because, yeah, they got wings, <laughs> and came right for Gorchar, who was totally still thinking about how cool he looked while walking away from that shit. Mm-hmm. The alligator mm-hmm. swooped down to strike, but out of nowhere, that fucking dog flew through the air, <laughs> latched onto the alligator's throat, and motherfucking ripped his throat out so hard his head fell off. What? Yeah. Yeah, that can happen. <laughs> Gorchar turned and saw what the dog had done. The dog was excited and looked up at the orc, who replied, I don't like dogs. What? Then turned to walk away again. Oh, no. The dog was crushed, but then a fucking other alligator flew out of the pit at Gorchar. It dug his talons into the orc's back and flew him high into the sky. <laughs> then he dropped him to his death. The dog watched the whole thing. <laughs> I can feel it. Falling in the air tonight. Don't tell me you're dog racist. <laughs> ha ha ha! The sorcerer had returned to his tower. I watched that death live and in person because the kangaroo won that fight a long time ago. <laughs> Bark, replied the dog. Eat your own turds, weirdo. How did that do- <laughs> that's, that's, that's what he said, though. <laughs> that's what the dog said? He said, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Eat your own turds, weirdo. How did the dog get in here anyway? I thought I had closed the front door, (laughs) said the sorcerer. He waited around for another moment that said, All right, I'm going to masturbate. (laughs) To everyone's girlfriend. (laughs) Damn, evil as shit. And the sorcerer returned to his chamber once more. The dog found himself outside the castle again, frustrated. He was about to start doubting his ability to be a great adventurer Mm -hmm. when all of a sudden a fucking tree flew out the castle and exploded. (laughs) Toothpicks rained all over as a badass bald dwarf in a sleeveless battle keg t-shirt walked out of the forest to the stone cold Steve Austin. (laughs) 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 Sorry. Sorry. The dwarf had a very long gray beard with various scars on his face. On his fists were two iron gauntlets covered in blood. Oh, my God. His name was Ralph the Pugilist. (laughs) The dwarf looked down at the dog and said, Are you a dog? (laughs) Bark, replied the dog. Let's do this. (laughs) 
replied <laughs> Ralph as he punched the castle's door down. <laughs> That's two, all he needed. That's yeah. all he needed to hear. The two stood at the entrance of the castle as the dust settled. Haunted house music was playing inside, <laughs> and they definitely heard a Frankenstein moving about. But was it on the haunted house music, or was that really a Frankenstein oh inside? God. There was no time to figure that out. The two entered the castle, and the goblins flooded the courtyard. Ralph started punching goblins in the face, straight up breaking their skulls with each strike. Jesus. The dog tossed him a monster energy drink potion <laughs> rehab, which he swallowed... And as he went on punching. <laughs> That's monster energy. <laughs> Sponsor. Give us money. <laughs> you can give us money now. <laughs> Make it out to Dom and Josh. <laughs> of the show. And or cash. <laughs> and, and write $50,000 in there. In, in the, not the name, in, in the money in part. The money part. The dog held one goblin's hands behind his back with his mouth as Ralph wound up a punch and knocked his head clean off. The two were a team. (laughs) They got to the alligator pit, and the punch holocaust continued. The punch holocaust. (laughs) Alligators went extinct that day. (laughs) (laughs) The two worked together through the rest of the gauntlet, (laughs) defeating a mummy lord, a gargoyle army, and yeah, there was a Frankenstein inside. (laughs) But they all fell to the dog and the mighty fists of Ralph the Pugilist. Mm -hmm. The dwarf and dog were covered in blood as they approached the sorcerer's chamber, when all of a sudden the sorcerer jumped out and tried to surprise them. You think you can sneak up on a sorcerer? When triple suddenly, (laughs) a battle axe flew through the air and split the sorcerer in two. As he fell apart, he said, Suck my split dick. (laughs) And he died. God. Ralph was shocked. He didn't bring an axe with him. Mm -hmm. He looked down at the dog, who had the stonedest, most coldest look on his little (laughs) dog face. Ralph thought about this for a while. I mean, how the fuck did that happen? (laughs) It's a a battle. A battle axe just flew through the air. This this dog doesn't have any hands. (laughs) What the fuck just happened? Ralph looked down at the dog for some time (laughs) and said... From now on, you shall be known as Battle Axe. <laughs> Battle Axe barked, and the two adventured into the sunset. The end. Dude, they're that friends. was great. They're friends now. We had very similar stories. Again, riding off in the sunset. Two friends mm-hmm. overcoming some stuff. Mm-hmm. Battle axes, mm-hmm. gauntlets, mm-hmm. or they were both. They were both fantasy too. Fantasy. Mm-hmm. They were both fiction. They weren't autobiographical, they, to my well, knowledge. They, they might, you know, to our knowledge, no. I mean, everything that we write is a little bit autobiographical. Yes. but that was great. Thanks. That was a great story. Thanks. I love that dog. Thanks. I love. You know, I gotta tell you something. Mm-hmm. Favorite dog ever? Bull terrier. Oh, that's your favorite dog? I think so. They're. Th- I, you know, I like any dog. Yeah, pretty, my favorite I, dog I, is. I love a dog. My favorite dog is the cat. You may leave. You may leave the, the throne room. <laughs> Not that I hate cats, but you just you just double tricked me. I double tricked you. And guess what? That's what kind of show this is now. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. Damn, is this going to be like Sid and Fred's story? Yeah, it is. Where we get upset at each other? Maybe. Fuck you. I, I mean... I love you. I mean, I love you. We're back. We're back. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, thanks, everyone, for listening to another episode. Thank you, Josh, for coming over my house and eating hoagies and watching football with me before we did this that uh that was fun thank you for having me over at your house and letting me eat hoagies on your couch and watch football of course and pet your dogs yes you can pet my dogs anytime Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) sorry reese's and snickerdoodle weren't around this episode apparently they're doing something but they're busy they're gonna be doing something they're getting ready for a thing yeah Yeah. thing. i guess that's what's going on yeah that's what they said that's what their people said that's what their people scroll said yeah (laughs) which was definitely in their handwriting yeah i could tell i mean we've dealt with them for 43 episodes i know Mm -hmm. but yeah stay tuned for that perhaps (laughs) Mm -hmm. and uh our prompts for next week before i forget again yeah uh, it will be library suggested by freddie malcolm 
and gnomes suggested by Jonathan Wilson. Also, our friend Abdul sent us an awesome animation of the intro Mm -hmm. song animated (laughs) to animations. (laughs) (laughs) To pictures. To pictures. No, he is an animator, and he animated the intro, and it's awesome. And you can check his website out at 3, the number 3, buddy.com. And you can also find him on Twitter at 3BDUL. Okay. And uh, which is Abdul. Oh, yeah. It's at the at letter A, B is a three. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, a pretty, pretty good job. That's smart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, well, I guess not. I guess the B is already in there. What's the three? <laughs> I guess the three is just three. His thing, threebuddy.com. Yeah. Go to his website. Yeah, yeah. But you can find it on there. You should check it out. It's awesome. He did a great job with it. So check out his website. Mm-hmm. Also, guys, we will have shirts in this week. I promise. Finally. I know I've said it a bunch of times but this time i meet it because i have to drive and pick them up tomorrow <laughs> i didn't have my car registered or my inspection i actually have to get my inspection and if you do that in there. philadelphia they'll just shoot you they they'll put you in a dungeon yeah, yeah. They'll, yeah. They'll, they'll put you in a dungeon uh, where they shoot bullets at they'll you. shoot your tires out no matter what in philadelphia. <laughs> they don't they don't care but uh we'll have a couple new t-shirts for you and uh those should go up sometime today if you're listening to this the day it came out so mm-hmm. also a great way to support the show without spending any money is by leaving an itunes review and we have one here from the dragon llama who does art you've probably seen his art if you Uh follow our facebook and twitter but this one is called truly magical and it says i came across this podcast early in 2014 and it instantly made it in my quote awesome internet stuff i sink time into end quote (laughs) q the stories are always very entertaining and are embiggened by the chemistry and friendship between Dom and Josh, which is natural, authentic, and cromulent. Was that a cromulent? Cromulent. 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 <laughs> <Crumpulent. laughs> For a while, I didn't know anyone else had listened to this show, so I gradually introduced it to my best friend, who I feared may have not cared for the humor and style. Fortunately, she fell in love with it during the first few episodes we shared, and soon started quoting the lore of Oryx Byer and Darinos better than I could. Wow. Cut two, she is now my girlfriend, and we make <laughs> a night of kicking back with some good me, dub dub, and some good old fantasy every week. Infinite <laughs> high fives to Dom and Josh, you're doing wizard's work, keep on wizarding. Infinite. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for that review. Yeah. That's a very nice thing to say. That was, that's awesome. I'm glad that we could uh, help you find love. Find true love. <laughs> a night finds a maiden. I guess it's wrong to uh go ahead and say she was like not a knight as well Maybe oh yeah she, she could be a knight two knights yeah. can bo- can bone two knights <laughs> two knights <laughs> two knights tonight <laughs> it's about to be a love ballad mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. them though mm-hmm. that is these adorable friends now lovers. now lovers <laughs> I guess we have to talk about a new schedule. Yeah. Yeah. So if you have been listening to the show, which I hope you have been if you're listening to this episode. If not, you've got 40-something episodes to check out. Yeah. But uh, the past few weeks, it's been it's been harder and harder to kind of get on a schedule. If you're hearing a sound in the background, that's cicadas. It's Pennsylvania in this September. This is Pennsylvania. I love cicadas. They're very beautiful. They are. And uh, if you heard a dog bark earlier, that was my like seventeen year old dog. But <laughs> back to what we were saying. He can drive. <laughs> he can. He can drive. He's he's seventeen. Yeah. He's got his permit. Yep. Yeah. We have not been able to meet the weekly deadline. And I feel like we've been letting a lot of people down, and uh, yeah. I feel bad about it, and I feel bad that we're even talking about changing the schedule, but I, we're, we'll be moving to a bi-weekly schedule. So. Yeah, just so we can, you know, not disappoint people, let it, let everybody know that it'll be out then, mm-hmm. instead of saying it'll be out every week, and then it's sort of, you know, not, being pushed back. Yeah. yeah. When I moved home, obviously, I thought I would have more time to do fantasy fiction, but mm-hmm. I, I kind of fell into a new job that is uh, taking a lot of my time, and Josh, you have, like, the hundred different things you're doing as well. Yeah. We're just kind of consumed by work right now, so instead of letting people down with not having a new episode every week, we'll go ahead and change it to every other week, give ourselves enough time to get it done, yeah. and uh, And make sure ha- that quality is still yeah, good. Yeah, and, and hopefully have an even better episode than right. we've done previously. But also with going to this bi-weekly schedule, we'll have more time to do different kind of stuff. So maybe you'll yeah. see more specials or... Yeah, we've got like a million things, a million ideas that we uh, we want to do, and we absolutely want to do them to help build up sort of the YouTube channel, mm-hmm. to have a little more video content that's 
fantasy fictionized. Yeah. I'm sorry that we have to change the schedule. I, again, I feel really bad about yeah. it. I, I feel like we are letting people down. But hopefully they'll be able to enjoy the show's new endeavors. What you'll see in the stuff that we get to do further with fantasy fiction outside of just the show the way it is, Mm -hmm. is that Josh and I will be able to work together a lot more. So instead of us working at our own wizard towers, uh, we'll be hopefully making uh, even better stuff and hopefully you guys will enjoy it. We're going to conquer the world is what what we're saying. We're going to conquer the world. Essentially what we're saying is that don't be sad. Yeah. This is a new beginning. And the show's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. We're still going to do it. Yeah. And then you're st- uh, hopefully you still enjoy it. Yeah. And hopefully. there'll be new t-shirts out this week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that you can check out if you really want some. Yeah. And I guess that's kind of it. Yeah. No, we're going to be, we're up to some, some stuff. There's some, there's some new stuff coming. I know we always say that, but we always are doing new stuff. Let's see what happens, guys. Yes. And until next week, Josh. Until next week. Keep on wizarding. <laughs> Keep on wizarding. We will, even in the weeks that we're off. And I hope you do too. Yes. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening again. Have a good week. Bye. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.